Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining me, the Digital Golf Doc. I am a licensed physical therapist, certified strength and conditioning coach, and researcher educator. And today, I want to talk to you about whether or not you have physical limitations getting between you and the perfect golf swing. What I mean by this is sometimes it's not technique that's interfering with us making the best golf swing. Sometimes our body just can't physically move the way we want it to. So that no matter the amount of great instruction we get, our body just can't make it happen because our muscles are too tight or our joints just don't move that way. I know this can be a little bit of a foreign concept for a lot of folks the first time they hear it. So I want to break it down the way I do with the golf coaches I work with. Here's a scenario. I'm coaching a player and I tell them I want their elbow higher at the top of their backswing. They nod their head okay and they try it and they fail. So then the next thing the instructor will often do is take a club out themselves and demonstrate. No, make your swing here. Get your elbow to this height. And they'll let the student try again. Failure again. So they might demonstrate one more time and say, well, here's the problem. You're swinging here. Do you see how low your elbow is? I need you in this position. And they'll give them a third opportunity. And the player still can't get there. Next, the golf coach is actually going to take the player and position their elbow for them in the golf swing. And the feedback might be, that just, it feels really awkward and uncomfortable. It might even be painful. Now, in this situation, nobody's doing anything wrong. It's not the instructor and it's not the player. The instructor was trained to learn certain positions and how to get the player there. The player just walked in the door looking to get better at golf. But what nobody did was screen the player for whether or not they had the physical ability to get there. That's a lot of times where I come in. In this situation, a lot of the coaches I work with will say, go see Joe. I'm feeling a sticking point that I don't know what to do with. So you need to talk to him and find out if you're physically capable of making that movement. I'll run them through a series of different movements, a very detailed full body screen to find out if they're actually able to get into that position. Again, if we're taking the swing here and I ask that player to stand this way and roll their arm back and they're stuck in this position, why would I expect that with a golf club they could now get into that position? I shouldn't expect that. So I have an assessment for basically every joint throughout the body. Today I'm going to share a few of the key ones with you so you can assess yourself at home and find out Maybe the reason that you have that huge slice and the reason you can't fix it is because you can't physically put your body in the positions to correct that swing fault. So let's jump in and take a look at this joint by joint. Very typically, the first limitation I see in a golfer is the inability to externally rotate their shoulder into the position of the top of the backswing. And that's exactly why I gave you that example in the beginning of this video, because I've had that exact scenario play out. A lot of times we don't stretch. We don't maintain our mobility. We're not getting our arm overhead the later we get in life. And the postures we're in throughout the day also don't facilitate those positions. So we lose it little by little, sometimes in the off season when it's cold. And we come back finding out we can't make the swing we want. So... I'm going to use the Titleist Performance Institute's 90-90 test. The first thing we're going to do for this test is stand nice and tall. I'm going to go to side angle because it's going to make it easiest for you to see. I'm going to place my elbow at this position. It's even with the height of my shoulder. And then I'm going to ask the player to rotate back as far as they can. I want to see at least 90 degrees. Even more is better. Oftentimes, I find people are stuck a little bit more in this position. So if you can't do that first position when you check yourself, then we might know why you have trouble at the top of the backswing. We can add a second element to this, and we can get in setup posture, like I'm going to hit a golf ball that direction. Just in this lean, I put a different demand on my shoulder blade. So I'm going to put my arm up and externally rotate again. I don't need the vertical position but I do want the angle of my forearm to match the angle of my drum. So you can do this yourself at home in the mirror and see if you can get that position to match. You can also video it with your camera phone. So check that out 
give yourself a pass or a fail. And if you failed, go find one of my videos about working on shoulder mobility. Now, I want to jump into the next part of this, and we're going to look at hip mobility, specifically hip rotation. In the golf swing, we have to rotate away in the backswing and through in the downswing. So what I have a golfer do, again, from the Titleist Performance Institute physical screen, is I'll have them put their feet together, hands on their hips, and I'm going to have them rotate. I'm going to have them go as far as they can one direction, as far as they can the other direction. We want to achieve at least 45 degrees of rotation, if not 60 degrees. Sometimes it can help see this by taking a club, placing it across your hips, feet together, rotate holding it on the hips, and see if I break that 45 degree angle. And then we'll go back in the downswing. If you can't complete that rotation to the right for a right handed golfer, it might tell us why you have a limited backswing or why your hands are doing something to make up for that lack of mobility. If you can't finish through, you lack rotation that direction, a lot of times that's when we start coming out of our posture as we swing. We call this early extension when our hips move toward the ball prior to contact. Those are just two of the things that can happen if you don't have the proper hip mobility. So check that on yourself. Again, the mirror or camera works great. And if you can't do it, go find one of my videos about hip mobility. Try and get that corrected. And I'm confident you're going to see improvements in your golf swing. In addition to just having the right amount of mobility, the next thing we need to have is the right amount of control. A concept I call dissociation. In the golf swing, if we go into super slow motion, what you realize is that the chest is actually moving away from the target when the hips start moving toward the target. And there's a split second where things are actually moving in opposite directions. It's where we get a lot of our power. So if you're not hitting the ball very far, that could be a reason. There's two tests I do for this. The first one is can we dissociate our upper body? I'll stand here. I want to keep my hips still, hands on my shoulders, and I'm going to work on rotating my upper back and shoulders while my hips stay still. If you notice when you move that your hips want to go with you, and no matter how hard you try, you can't separate the movement, again, that may be a reason you're losing power. We're going to reverse it in the exact same setup, the harder of the two in my opinion, and we're going to try and rotate the hips without the shoulders moving. There's a secondary thing you want to watch in this. I say you should be able to rotate in a barrel. So if I give you some imaginary sides, you should be able to rotate each direction and avoid bumping into your hands. Because if we start shifting this way, we get sway or slide, which can cause all kinds of erratic movements on the golf swing. While those four movements are not the only parts of a golfer evaluation, when I work with everything from amateurs to professionals, they are some of the most important parts. So you want to make sure you can check them off. And if you can't, go through my videos, find something to address it. It'll be labeled hip mobility or shoulder mobility. It might be labeled sequencing or dissociation for one of those last two movements. So you have to sort those out if you want to be able to make a great golf swing. Otherwise, you might go get lessons or you might practice on the range after watching some YouTube videos and the instructor says do this and you're trying and you might feel like you're doing it, but you'll notice you aren't getting the results over time. That's a big clue to me that you might have a physical limitation between you and the golf swing you want to make. So run through these tests. If you have trouble with them, leave a comment in this video or send me an email, digitalgolfdoc at gmail.com. I'm happy to direct you to the exact video you need to improve those movements.